Midjourney rolled out the release of their new website, to mixed reviews. For a company that has mastered the high-tech world of AI, it seems like they're only just discovering HTML. But I am starting to warm to the website a little. The website has been in development for months now, and this release is, well, half-baked, and it's confusing a lot of users. Today I'll show you how to navigate the Midjourney website 2.0. We'll compare it with the old website and even drop into the unpublished alpha website to better understand how it evolved. As of the end of October 2023, the new website is live. It's the page you'll get when you sign into Midjourney or click the web button on Discord. You can still access the old or legacy website, mainly because some of the important tools are missing from the new site. The new site has a clean user interface, but it is currently missing some important features. And there are a few tools that are hidden in the minimalist design. The most obvious change is the absence of grids. Each image is individual. This reflects the reality of version 5. All images in the grid are already upscaled. That's why it's so fast to pull an image out of the grid on Discord. This means more images to sift through. Use the search filters to easily find your upscaled favorites. Parent grids are here, they're just hidden. If you've upscaled an image, hover over the upscale label at the top of the page, and you'll see the grid images. A major improvement is with image searching. The old website just couldn't handle searching the vast number of images. The new website is lightning fast and the new navigation system is a fun way to scroll through images. Click on an image and you'll see what I mean. But the images are small. You'll have to click on an image to really get a good look. The community feed is now the explore page. The variety of images has been steadily improving over the last months, but there does seem to be a different selection system at play. There are different images in the community feed depending on whether you're on the new or the old website. Rating images hasn't changed much. You'll see pairs of images. Simply choose which you like best. You can zoom through quite a few pairings. The top 2000 raters get an extra hour, so give Midjourney your preference. If you spend any time at all rating, you're likely to get the extra hour. You can fave images, and it's a great way to pick up new prompts. Sometimes the pairs are variations, and other times it feels like comparing apples and oranges. Images created both in Discord and on the Niji Journey mobile app show up in your gallery. Let's open an image and see what info you have to work with. The prompt and parameters are here, and there's info telling me this is a 4x upscale. If you used an image in the prompt, it will also show here too. Click on the three dots to see more. You can copy the seed and the job ID, and now you can copy the image and the image URL. The favorite button has disappeared, but you can add a rating. It's very subtle. Look in the bottom right hand corner. At the top of the page is promises still to come. It's a prompt box. One day, maybe, you'll be able to make images outside of Discord. Discord has been a stumbling block for many new users and generating images on the website would streamline image creation. But there is the feeling that the Discord community would be lost. With this in mind, there is a community tab that takes you, you guessed it, right back into Discord. But we already have the ability to make images outside of Discord. You can make images on the Niji Journey app and on the Alpha website. Didn't know about the Alpha website? It's because it was tested with Midjourney super users. It has a lot of features that didn't make it into this version of the website. I'll show you more later. I'm coming to appreciate the new sleek design, but it makes it hard to find some tools. Faved images are on the Explore tab under Likes. Unfortunately, your own images are mixed in with everyone else's. On the old website, the favorited section in your gallery showed only your images. The best interface was the Alpha website. Likes were in one place and you could choose all, only your images, or only the images of other creators. You can batch download your daily work. 
click on the icon next to the date. Now you see Download All, and in my case, since I'm working in stealth mode, Publish All. This replaces the archive in the old website. I like that the download is quick, and the button changes to a green Downloaded when you've downloaded a day's work. But that designation quickly disappears. Keeping that downloaded notification on would be great. But missing from the new website is the ability to pick and choose which images you want to download. Unfortunately, the website is missing quite a few features that I took for granted on the old site. Maybe they are in development, or maybe this shows a shift in priority. The Explore Related section under each image is gone. I loved seeing my image alongside similar creations. Also gone are the hot links in the prompt. These parsed your prompt into smaller nuggets and let you see images with a similar element. And you still can't really trace the origins of an image back through the creation process. Where did the image come from? Where did it evolve to? Each image is siloed. Creativity is a web of interactions and you really can't see them. The search tool is faster, but it is limited to prompt words. You can't search by parameters or other tools. It would be very handy to search by variations, pans, stylized values, especially with the tuned styles coming out. If you do a lot of image prompting, like with blend mode, there is still no way to search for these images. And you still can't search by user. For a community-oriented app, this seems a major oversight. You can search for images, but you can't sort images. Gone are the useful top, new, and hot filters. A minor but nonetheless annoying design flaw is that the search bar doesn't scroll. And there's also no easy way to get back to the top after scrolling. Despite the attention to community, the website lacks a lot of community features of the old website. A major omission is the inability to share your gallery. On the old site, you could view it as a visitor, and then you could share the link with your unique user ID in the URL with other Midjourney subscribers. But I can't seem to find a way of sharing a gallery on the new website. And all the personalization is gone. There's no banner, no profile pic. And there doesn't seem to be any way of following other creators. So for all the talk of community, the website strips us of the ability to do a basic social media thing and follow creators who inspire us. And while I'm on the topic, a little soapbox. I'm a bit conflicted about the image download button. Okay, I get the openness of Midjourney's ethos, the sharing and learning from others. But being able to flat out download another's image seems just like stealing. By all means, copy the prompt or use it as an image prompt but the download feature seems to condone stealing rather than a spirit of collaboration. And there is some confusion over whether stealth images are being shown on the Explore page. I really only use stealth to stop downloads. I don't mind if others have my prompts to play with, but the download thing is a deal breaker for me. I'm paying a price for stealth, so I don't want to see my images on the Explore page. My biggest gripe about the new site is the missing organizational tools. There are no collections and no way to keyword images. Oh well, who needs organization tools? I only have 25,000 images. I'm sure I'll remember where I put that one I'm looking for for my next video. Priority seems to be the newer users with fewer images. This doesn't bode well for long-term retention of users. I personally still use Lightroom to organize my images. And missing on the website is the ability to delete images. To delete an image, open the image in Discord and add a reaction. Now choose the X emoji. The image should disappear from your gallery. There are a few features included on the alpha version of the website that didn't make the final cut. The alpha version is still live and being tested by Midjourney super users. You can run prompts on Alpha, but you can also create directly from the community page. One click and you were running the prompt or using an image as an image prompt. And you had some additional tools like Shuffle Prompt, Transform Prompt, and the Describe tool is here. 
and the Alpha website kept the images you uploaded so you could use them again as an image prompt. And I liked that you had quick access to parameters. It's sort of like the settings tool in Discord, but this also included other tools, like preferred suffixes. And the Alpha site had workspaces and collections. In many ways, the Alpha site was more forward-looking than the current version. If this was the first Midjourney website you'd seen, you might love it. And I do like the speed. But key features seem to be missing. Despite valuing creativity and community, the website kind of limits both. The designers may have gotten too deep into the technicalities of the website and forgotten the user experience, the reason we use the website. Hopefully this is a temporary step back to rebuild and push forward. Try out the new website and give us your review in the comments below. If this video was helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. This is Jen at Making the Photo. Let's make something amazing together.